us on the show is Olusoji Oyahuye. He is the co-founder and the CEO of Resus Intermediaries Limited. Good morning. Thank mm -hmm. you for joining us. Good morning. Brian. And congratulations. 15 years anniversary. Oh, yes. That's July a long one. time. It is in this environment, especially. <laughs> Work anniversary or marriage anniversary? Ah. <laughs> no, I need to be sure. Uh, work. Uh, work business anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> marriage is to about 29 years. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Congratulations. You see somebody with this kind of gray hair, you ask me <laughs> if it's only 15 years, it's been managed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk outsourcing now. Um, a lot of persons do not really understand what outsourcing is really about. They confuse it with casualization and all Absolutely. of it. But then help us better understand what it is exactly. Uh, interestingly, first, uh, outsourcing comes from two words, outside and then sourcing. Outside and sourcing, so outsourcing. It principally just means... Uh, transferring work deci and decision rights to an organization outside your business. Mm. And uh, businesses mm. do that principally for three reasons. One, to save costs, because it moves your cost from variable to fixed. So if I've outsourced a function, and this is contract sum, there's no variation for that two, three years. But when you manage in-house, there are all kinds of liabilities and issues that can occur. Mm. Outsourcing makes it fixed. Oh, okay. Second basic thing is it enables organizations to focus on what is core to them and let right. somebody who is better at what is not core to them handle it as it is. So it, that also enhances efficiency because then you are focused on what you are good at as it is. And thirdly, it helps businesses enhance their competitive advantage in the market because they save costs, they're more efficient, they're able to do things better than competition but i need to quickly make a clarification because yeah. usually when people talk outsourcing especially in nigeria mm. it's always assumed they're talking about human resource human being outsourcing you and right. when you said casualiz casualization yeah that flows from there right but people outsourcing is less than five percent of outsourcing okay. outsourcing again means transferring decision rights and functions to someone outside the organization. Okay. Not just about employment. So, it's not, so for example, a lot of banks, I'm sure if you call most international mm -hmm. banks, the person mm -hmm. picking the call is in India or in South Africa. So they've outsourced their call center, not mm -hmm. the human being. They've right. outsourced mm -hmm. the function. So another but it, it, that so seems another to country. differ from the model we run here. Kind of. Uh, that's, that's why I'm hoping today to be able to put some so clarification. So help us, why? Tell, talk to us about too. that, our own kind of model. Uh, the unfortunate fact in Nigeria first is outsourcing as a business model is not regulated. Uh -huh. So everybody just wakes up, either they're out of job or they come out of school, they say they are in outsourcing. But it's a professional practice. It's like medicine, like engineering. You can't just finish medic, uh, medicine. You still have to go for is it house, medical school or whatever. Yeah. Housemanship. Or housemanship. housemanship. Same with law. Mm. Even after you read law, you have to go to law school. Yes. Is that way outside Nigeria. But here, everybody just carries a briefcase and say they're an outsourcing. I'm a certified outsource professional of the International Association of Outsourcing Professionals because there's no such certification locally. Mm. When I left mm. banking uh, after 19 years in 2006 to start this, right, we went in that direction. Okay, right. sir. Talk okay. Mm. I'm happy that you had a background in banking because these people, mm. quote unquote, the bank, are the ones who move them, taking advantage largely of outsourcing. But would you say the banks in Nigeria are outsourcing or they are casual, like, they are falling in the area of casual? Casualizing, casual, casualizing, workers. casualizing workers. Because I go to the banking halls and people mm. I see now, they don't even carry the ID card of the bank. bank they carry yeah. a different ID card and they, there's no like that brand presence of this is what we're doing. We're bankers. Like anybody can just be employed there. Uh, uh, that's a very, very good question, Tokwe. Uh, you see, I come from that industry. It's part of mm. why I went into this business right. when I left banking. Mm. I saw that what banks were practicing were principally casualization, mm. not outsourcing. was mm. why I went for the certification, and we set out to do it differently. Mm. Now, for almost all banks, they 
multi-source. So you'll find more than one provider. Mm. And the basic difference is, you see, casualization simply means the staff have no core benefits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the terms of employment are short term, six months renewable, one year renewable, no medicals, no pension, no mm. tax, no nothing. paid leave, mm. nothing. nothing. We don't do that at Resource Intermediaries Limited. Mm. So what, that is casualization. Outsourcing, even on the people's side, it's a labor certified process. Every staff we manage has a valid letter of employment that mm. is not time bound. Mm. They have paid annual leave. They are covered through the HMO for medical. And if we need to exit them, we give notice or we pay in lieu. They also cannot just take off without paying us or giving oh. notice. Mm -hmm. So the, the letter they carry is the same letter all of my staff mm. employed have. Right. Uh, I have about 85 core staff. All of those staff have that same letter. Mm. So it's not because they are working and deployed to different organizations. So that's a distinction. But you're right. A lot of banks don't go into that process. They, it's easier for them to work with the organization that will cut corners with them mm. and do all of those tricks. We don't do that at Resource Intermediary All right, Bissinger. So um, there's this new law passed by the National Assembly on casualization and yeah. uh, contract staffing. What's your take on it? Uh, that's not a very good question, BC. Uh, you see, I'm in 100% support of that law. Uh, specifically, uh, I think it's section 7, subsection 1 of that act. What it says is it provides that every employee must have their employment regularized within 90 days. So casualization is even in that law, but mm. not for more than 90 days. Yeah. That within 90 days, that employment must be regularized. And I've just told you, with my company, that we don't even have that 90-day window. Every staff we employ and deploy, from day one, the employment is regularized. Mm. Mm. So but casualization, it's allowed even in that act, but not for more than 90 days. Right. So we don't do that. We don't do that. So right. I'm in full support of the law. Yeah. Okay. There's a massive unemployment in Nigeria. How can your company help that um, address the problem situation? Uh, another good question, Yeni. Uh, you see, each time I talk of an, I look at employment, unemployment. My first response is always for <laughs> those candidates to look inwards. Mm. We're familiar first with the fact that. A lot of our graduates are not even employable. Now, I'm a local breed. All my education <laughs> is local, so don't get me wrong. There's no Harvard, there's no, it's all local. And I'm a third class graduate, by the way. Right. Mm. So everything is local. Right. Okay. But you can Google me. <laughs> they rule the world, actually. Third class, they rule as, the world. As it is. Mm. Right. So the reality is uh, a lot of those students, what's, it's not their fault. Society in Nigeria, basically celebrate certificates mm -hmm. more than the Content. actual Ability. learning that mm. can be applied in school. Mm -hmm. That's of the challenge. So what have we done? We started about nine years ago a program called the RIL Finishing School. So we started a school because we employ and we, we see people with those certificates. And when you sit down with them at an interview, someone with first class computer science, the first thing we say is, okay, type this document and into the system and print it. They can't even put the computer on. Because in school, probably they use one big computer to teach 500 people. Right. Yeah, and true. the computer used was a box. 19 Ancient Google. ones. Right. So we started mm. nine years ago, what mm. we call the RL Finishing School. So for mm. five days, <laughs> it's a paid program, 30,000. We teach 18 modules. So mm. things that help you in the real world, not certificates. Right. right. 18 modules. Entrepreneurship, which is our emphasis, that even if you get these jobs, it's temporary. Don't get too sucked up, especially in an outsourced job. Right? Go start your own. So we teach mm. entrepreneurship, poise, uh, public speaking, decision making, accounts for non accountants, sales and marketing. 18 modules over five days. That's and in the nine years, we've, we've had 2,768 people pass mm. through it in 85 streams. 
mm. as it is. Because each model, it defines change. So that's one of our contributions. Next is, every chance we get, like I have mm -hmm. this with you lovely ladies today, we try to push that fact that, please, certificates are overrated. Yeah, true. Mm. Whatever that will take a long time have. to accept. Yes, ah, we're we just talk reality. to those who get. So go and self-develop yourselves. What mm. are the skills needed today? Mm. Go take a two weeks program, three months program to get that certification. Then you get the job. There are jobs out there. Really? Mm. There are they jobs are. out there. Yeah. They are. There are jobs out there. Just have the right certification. Have the right certification. But still talking about contribution, uh, let's help us understand the industry, its yeah. contribution into the economy. Mm. That's another aspect we'd like to know. Uh, first, uh, when I spoke about the benefits earlier, uh, one of the major benefits outsourcing provides, again, I'm not just talking HR outsourcing, outsourcing generally, is it actually improves the GDP of mm. the country because mm. of foreign investment. Currently for us, for example, in our little company in our 15 years, we manage about three different foreign accounts who pay us in dollars. And we've never seen them. All the engagement was online. We manage their wow. local staff. Oh, wow. So that's FX coming in as wow. it is. And so that's one major advantage. So foreign exchange is earned because our businesses are outsourced to Nigeria. Then the fact that you can be more efficient in running your business and transfer <coughs> what is not called to you to an outsource provider enhances the efficiency of yeah, businesses and focus. All right. Now, quickly, because you mentioned 15 years, would like to understand um, how the lessons you have learned over the years building the company and ensuring that you sustain it up till this time. And then you mentioned something earlier that I'd like for you to quickly touch on uh, before perhaps we let you go. And that is the aspect of the fact that you said outsourcing is not regularized. And I'm wondering what the implications are. Those two questions, perhaps. OK, two in one. Uh, thank you again, uh, Veronica. Um, interestingly, sometime next week, I, I have it out on my social media handle. Um, I'm, I'll be sharing 15 secrets that we have learned in 15 years to 15 business owners. And they're just to register as a free two-hour session with me. So I'll share three of them now. Yeah, all right. One key one is recognize that your people are your greatest assets. That's your workers, your you mean? Your staff are your yeah. greatest assets. So yeah, any right business that wants to grow and thrive, mm. if you don't have that understanding. So your people, are, and it's not just by saying it, you have mm. to live it. Mm. Mm. We have a crash in the office. So my staff that have babies after the three months maternity resume with the baby for another one year. And the baby's in the crash and work is going on. That's us leaving the <laughs> fact of and your staff. And that was very um, focused because her baby's not TVC too far. has Absolutely. a crash as well, so. Absolutely. The and the, the male, the fathers whose wives work in places that they don't have that bring the baby to the office mm. Mm. as it is. We also have paternity leave. Wow. Oh, awesome. Yeah. That's new. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you don't just say your people are your greatest assets. You leave it. As Show it. How long you is the paternity leave? <laughs> For us, it's uh, two weeks. That's okay. good enough. That's good enough. Stay at home. That's take your baby. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> Second one. Second one is advertisements don't bring the customer. All it does is it gets you known. Awareness. Mm. So what brings the customers? Contact, engagement, one on one. Mm. Uh, I'm sure there's some adverts you've watched on TV. You know. I don't want to sell anyone here, but beautiful mm. adverts. And we like the adverts, but you didn't buy the product. Mm. In fact, you can watch the advert 50 times, but it's <laughs> such a nice advert. Yes. But you didn't buy the product. Mm -hmm. What about reference? So, reference could work so, too. What, reference work. That's what I mean. You mm. must, customer contact. comes by contact. Mm. And a good way to grow your contact is to recognize that the sole purpose of a business is to create a customer and keep the customer, not mm. to make money. Mm. If your focus is money, that business won't last. Okay. Uh, the third one is uh, you must keep your costs low. And in keeping your costs low, consider outsourcing. So there's some functions you don't need to take on. You don't need to have an accountant in when you're starting a business. Even some sales and marketing can be outsourced. Keep your costs low. Also, use a co-work facility rather than rent an office. And you're paying rent two, three million naira. Use your mm -hmm. home. You, use your home. 
or a co -work, we also run co-work facilities. That's what I'm mentioning. <laughs> the bunker facilities are owned by us in Lekki, Yaba, Abuja, and right. Ibadan. So for 250000 you have an office, basically, rather mm. than you're not paying rent, diesel, or security, any of that, all in that package. Or you wow. pay 3000 per day, 25000 a month. So that brings your costs. Okay, they are awesome. packaging, yes. Look, yeah. Many people so, don't know these things. Uh, yeah, no, your final words before we let you go. Final, final words. Uh, first, I'm an incurable optimist generally, you including about our country. Mm. So if people like me can like me. survive and build a 15-year-old business with a subsidiary in Ghana and four other businesses coming out of that main business, the last three in a COVID year, mm. all thriving, then... It's no, possible, but try and get a business coach, someone who's been there to help you through. Sometimes they will charge you for that right. experience sharing, but it's an investment worth taking. Okay, Olusoji Oyawi, co-founder, MDCEO Resource Intermediaries Limited. Thank you for your time Thank and you, congratulations sir. once again. Thank you, Veronica and Bisi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. likes meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so